All right, guys, welcome to another episode of Imagine, Capture, Inspire. On this episode, I'm just going to show you a couple tricks and tips for landscape photography. And unfortunately, today, we don't quite have the, um, the environment and the weather that I was hoping for. But I think sometimes it's just important to get out, enjoy nature, and have a good time. going on everyone so uh, here at uh, trying to take some photos of sun's rise I was hoping for a bit of fog this morning but unfortunately it just didn't come so um, I'm gonna persist anyway it's a couple things I normally do when setting up for a landscape photo and make sure I've got my subjects in focus. I always use live view. So I switch it to live view, zoom in, and switch to manual focus and pretty much just make sure my subjects are nice and sharp. Take a quick test shot. Looking pretty good, um, you know, it'd be nice if we had some fog, a bit more cloud or some colour. Got some nice pastels in the sky. I think today, um, you know, this is the first time I'm shooting this location, so today I think um, just enjoying the time here and enjoy the peacefulness. Now, I thought I might show you maybe how I build my exposure and what I'm actually doing with my filters and the scene in front of me. Now I've been taking photos this morning before recording this. So I'm gonna show you photos from previously, but this will give you a bit of an idea on how I got there. So, I'm currently recording in this camera as well. Currently I'm on uh, 100th of a second, F11, 250 ISO. So with landscape photography, um, always trying to use the lowest ISO possible to help minimize any noise and um, just help the image quality a little bit. However, you can still go up higher if you want. Um, it's just a general rule that lower ISO means you're going to have crisper, cleaner images. Less noise, less grain. All right? But we're going to be using some other filters and things, so I may change my ISO afterwards. So I'm at f11, 100th of a second. So currently the sky's a lot brighter than the foreground. So I'm not a huge fan of that. I actually want to make these two look very similar in exposure. That just almost gives it a, that mirror-like uh, look to it. So what I've actually got here is a Lee two-stop hard ND filter. So that means there's no um, it's not graduated, it's just a hard line. So I'll pretty much slide that into the second slot of my filter holder. Try to line it up with that horizon as best as possible. So now they're looking pretty much identical. You can see in camera there, I'm pretty happy with how that's gonna look. I'll take a photo, it'll look pretty good. Um, the next step is when I do take a photo, which I'll do for you now. Oh. So I'll do, I will take a photo, show you what it looks like. I mean, it's a bit dark, um, could always go a bit brighter. So what I'll do is, let's just go down to 1 40th of a second. We'll take one more shot and it looks pretty cool. It looked a little bit better this morning, so I'll put up those photos as well. But you can just see in the water, I mean, I don't, I don't mind the ripple effect. It kind of looks cool, um, but I want to just mix it up a little, maybe bring a bit more of um, just a smooth and calm feeling to the image. So 
You can either use stack a bunch of filters or you can get maybe a six stop filter from Lee or Nissi or whoever you want. Or I've got the Lee 10, um, what is it? The 10 stop big stopper, I think is what they call it. So I'm gonna slide that in. I've already set my focus. I've already moved it to manual focus. So there's not gonna be any issues with focusing. All right, so I'm gonna slide this in. We're at 1 40th of a second F11 250. Just be careful not to move that other filter. I'm gonna record that as well. So now it's dark, right? It's really, really black. Great thing about Lee, and I think Nissi have one as well, is they've got a, um, they've got an app called the Big Stopper app, um, or you can just change it to six stops, which is the little stopper, 10 stops or 15 stops. I often find that to be honest, a 10 stop filter is good for um, more daylight stuff. So maybe things after 10 a.m. in the morning, and um, maybe until about 3 p.m., depending on your location, but something that's quite bright, quite vibrant. Um, I would actually prefer a six stop filter, and this will just save on some of the exposure times as well. But for the time being, we're on 1 40th of a second F11. Now, we're looking, this is all about time, all right? So we're all, all we're gonna change is time. I'm gonna slide this up to, do, do, do. All right, slide that up to 1 40th of a second. It's telling me I need a 30 second exposure. So all I do is change this now to 30 seconds. I've gotta go into here, switch that off, and you'll start to see 1 30th, we're pretty similar. I may need to increase that just a little. Let's take a shot, see how it looks. Now, although this morning I didn't quite get the, um, uh, the weather conditions that I was hoping for, I'm glad I'm out here already because I've actually just noticed we've got some hot air balloons going up right near one of the dead trees to the left. So I might just, um, play around with that shortly after taking this photo. Try to incorporate them into my, my landscape shot. Um, and who knows, I may even Photoshop some stuff, which I don't normally do. And that's actually looking pretty good. One thing I always do is just check your histogram. You can actually see I've got no blacks clipped, I've got no highlights clipped which means when I go editing, I should have a lot of detail there to recover any highlights or um, shadows and blacks and things like that. Um, that's just a rule, you don't always have to do it like that. Beautiful. So let's have a look at some of the hot air balloons rising just over there. Try to incorporate that into our shots today. Wish me luck. 